This week we're looking at correlation. I've got open here the car depreciation data set which some students collected a few years ago and they were looking, they were interested in the uh, advertised price of a second hand car versus the original price of the car um, along with a few other variables which you can see here. So before we calculate any correlations um, we might want to do a couple of graphs just to have a look at the data. So in SBSS, if I go to Chart Builder, and we'd be interested in, if we're interested in the relationship between two continuous variables, we'd want to do a scatter plot. We can do a dot plot of one variable by itself. You see here you need to hover over them to see what the difference is here. Simple dot plot. We'll try a simple dot plot first, and then you'll see the difference between them. And this is just to have a look at, at one variable variable by itself so we could have a look at the original price of all our cars. So the original price is going from 0 to $400,000 but we don't have a point up there so our highest point is just over $300,000 but most of them are in this range here. What's that? We might actually want to double click on this and change the graph so we can see how expensive these cars were. Um, let's just change that. So we would go into, we could go into scale for a start and change that maximum to $350,000 because we don't really need to go all the way up to $400,000. Now the major increment, so this is the gap between the major tick marks and that seems to me to be a little bit far apart. So let's change that to let's change that to fifty thousand. Um, labels and ticks. I'm just wondering where those decimal points are coming in because I don't really want to see. Let's apply that anyway. Well, that's better. I don't want to see those two decimal points there. I have to have a look later and see if I can take those out. So we can see that most of the cars here are falling just below this $50,000 mark. And we've got a few fairly pricey cars and then some very, very expensive cars. So that's the original price. And the question that the students had was, uh, depending on does this original price correlate or have an association with the sale price. We can't really look at cause and effect with an observational data set. Um, we're just looking at to see if there's an association. So if we go back into our chart builder and we can pick a scatter plot, we can keep our original price along the x-axis here and now on the y-axis we might want to look at the advertised price. So this will be the second hand price that the um, owner is trying to sell their car for. Okay. Now we've, it's quite a big data set so you can see that there's a whole lot of stuff clumped together here. Each point on this plot represents one car. So this car here, the original price was somewhere around let's say $150,000 and the advertised price was somewhere around $30,000. And you can see that there does appear to be a trend upwards, as in the more expensive the car was to start with, the more it's being advertised for, which makes sense. Now there's a couple of anom anomalies which you can see here, and this is why it's always good to do a plot, just to see for interesting data points. So we have some cars here that were actually, the original price was very low. You can see that it's close to zero, but they're being sold for you know, what's that, $80,000? That's that's pretty high. And this is extraordinary. Three hundred, I don't know, $60,000. We could go through and find the, the exact price if we're interested. But just looking at the patterns in the data, we might have a question about how it was that these cars were bought so cheaply and yet they were being sold for such extraordinary amounts, or advertised anyway. And the the students in their project do make a note that these appeared to be restored classic cars and so they're appealing to a very particular market. So if you were analysing this data and you were only interested in this, 
the purchase and resale of, let's say, ordinary cars and not ones that are used for show or prestige cars, then you would have a, a good reason then to exclude these data points from the analysis. But as a rule, you don't just delete data points because they fall outside the range of the data, that the rest of the data, that would be a very bad practice indeed. But if there is a reason for it, such as they're they are actually a different type of car, fall into a different category, then that might be a good reason to just temporarily exclude them from the analysis and see what the correlation is between all the cars that are not show cars. So that's quite interesting. Now in terms of actually calculating the correlation, we'll do that through a different menu item. So far we've only used the graphs, now we're going to go to the analyse and look at correlate. And we can do all of this through the bivariate correlation. You'll see here I had all of them popped in. Let me take them out again. So SPSS will calculate a whole lot of correlations for you at once. You do have to be careful though, the more op options you tick, the more output it spits out and then you have to read through it all. So let's just keep it simple to start with. We'll look at the, the original price and the advertised price and that's what we're interested in at the moment. The options, we can get it to give us the means and standard deviations and the missing values. I don't think we have any in this case and for your student projects you probably won't have any missing missing values um, so you can just leave that at the default. We don't need to worry about bootstrapping. Correlation coefficients, we're just going to use the Pearson one and we haven't got up to tests of significance yet. There's no option to turn this off so you can just leave that on um, and you'll read about that either later this week or as we move further on into the course flag significant correlations and we can leave that on if you like. So correlation goes from negative 1 to 1, an upward trend where if one variable increases the other variable also increases is a positive correlation. Uh, a downward trend, a negative correlation would mean if one variable increased the other variable decreased and we might see that in some other data sets. And if the dots are just all over the place and there doesn't seem to be any particular pattern, then that would be a correlation somewhere around zero. Now we would expect, looking at this, well I would anyway, that we would um, get a positive correlation and a fairly high one too, I would think. It depends a little bit on what's going on in this clump down here, which we can't see because there's so many data points all together and we could zoom in on that part of the graph if we were interested to look in more detail at that. So if we go down to the correlation here, we can see that it does everything twice because it, it prints out the correlations in a matrix. So we only really need to look at the first row and the original price, Pearson correlation with the advertised price is 0.776 and it's given us this asterisk here because it is a significant uh, correlation, statistically significant and we haven't got into the details of what that means yet so you can sort of gloss over that for the moment. Now you'll notice that it calculates the correlation with itself. Now any variable correlated with itself should give you a perfect correlation of, of 1 because it's exactly the same so you kind of don't even need to look at this. It's, a, um, it's not needed. Uh, so what you can do if you have a number of variables is you can get SPSS to calculate a whole correlation matrix and look at all the correlations for you at the same time. So if we go back into uh, correlate bivariate we can also put in year, kilometres travelled, engine size. Now we don't want to do, we probably don't want to do price change as well as original and adver advertised price because this one has been calculated from these two. We'd either, I think we would either look at this one or we would want to look at, at these two. I don't know that it would be sensible to look at all of them together. Uh, okay. So now if we look at the original price, we can see that there's a high correlation with the, the original price and the advertised price. This is a significant correlation, but it's not very high. It's, this is getting closer to zero. So there's not a strong correlation between the original price and the year. So that just means that you can get, there may be a slight trend that cars get more expensive as the years progress, but it's not very strong. And that's just because there would have been expensive cars from when the data set um, started to now and we could have a look at that actually. Um, the original price, probably be more sensible to plot the year here and the original price going up. Uh, it's going to give us two, we'll take them both out, original price. And it's dropped our x-axis.
So there is a slight trend and actually one of the problems you can see with the data set now is that there's only a couple of cars back from 1970 and then there's this great big gap. So, and this will be affecting the correlation. This will be making it seem like there's an, an upward trend because these are so low. I wonder if we plotted just these ones, whether we would actually get a significant correlation at all. So we do have expensive cars from 1990 and before 2000, and we've got expensive cars between 2000 and 2010. Just in here, it does look like there, are, there is an, an upward trend, and this would be probably just due to inflation. So we might expect a very small upward trend, but it's certainly not very strong. So that's between the original price here and year. The kilometres travelled with the original price. Now I don't know that there is a sensible interpretation of that. It's hard to see how the kilometres travelled um, after the, the purchase would correlate except that perhaps if you bought a more expensive car you don't want to drive it so much perhaps maybe a more sensible correlation to look at would be the advertised price and the correlation as in the more you've driven the car the lower your advertised price because it's worth less because it's got more K's on the ticker so we could have a look at those two in a chart so let's have a look at the kilometers traveled down here and let's look at the advertised price. You'll notice, depending on where you put it, if you put it up there, it has the plus sign, and I think it wants to plot the two together. We could try that, and it's going to give us a different colour. So let's have a look. Sometimes it's, depending on the data set, it can be confusing to plot two at once, or it can be interesting. So what we've got here is we've got the advertised price in blue and the original price in green and you can see that um, the further the car has travelled uh, the lower the advertised price and presumably this is our show car up the top that has not travelled very far at all because it's a prestige car on display and so this is a negative correlation but you'll notice it doesn't look like a straight line it's a bit of a, a bend in it and that's why the correlation is not um, close to negative one it's, it's only about negative three so let's go back up to our correlation matrix here and the engine size uh, so this the engine size may just be a factor in whether or not the car retains its value. I, d I really don't know enough about cars to comment on that. So there is a small positive correlation here. So we can have a look at that too. The um, takeout kilometres travelled and put in engine size. And you'll see that the bigger the engine size, the bigger the the original price, as in they cost more to start with, and the more they um, sold for. So this may be a, a case where you've just got um, the lurking variable is just the original price, as in the more they were bought for, the more they will sell for, and the engine price caused the original price, which then caused the advertised price. But the advertised price is not directly linked to the engine size. It can get a little bit complicated. So that's quite an interesting little data set. Now, I'd encourage you to have a, a poke through and see what else you can pull out of that to get a feel for what's going on with the data. Now, I've just looked at the original and the advertised price. It might be interesting to go through and do this all again, looking at the change in price and see if the ones that had the smallest change in price, as in they retained the most of their value, had things in common like low kilometres on the clock.